How's it going guys, it's a final render here and welcome to Kerbal Space Program. Kerbal Space Program is a game I should have played on this channel quite a while ago because I love it so much. At one point I played this game addictively every day for maybe like three months or something like that. Final Render, which is a pretty good name actually for a space company after all. How about we have a sandbox game so we're not limited in any way. Welcome to the space station of Final Render. So, the kind of goal for Kerbal Space Program is to have landed and to have a satellite around every celestial body in the known universe. To start off with, we will obviously have to have a satellite going around Kerbin, aka Earth, so that we can go ahead and start monitoring Earth before we start to go towards the far stars. Shouldn't be too difficult to actually do this, but we'll start with just a regular Sputnik pod. This is going to be for our Kerbin satellite. Let's call it Kerbin 1. Oh, maybe if I get rid of that E. Right now I'm just after some kind of fuselage structure which I can actually just equip all of my science stuff into. Let's go for just a regular old fuselage structure. Right, we're going to go ahead and add some little rechargeable batteries as well. We'll have three, that's definitely more than enough. Of course we need a way to power our batteries with the solar panels. Let's add four. There we go, that should give us plenty of recharging power. We're basically just going to go ahead and throw all of the science equipment aboard the ship. You know, even if we don't really need it, this is going to be a very simple ship, purely for gathering scientific data. Alright, so this is going to be our little satellite, which is actually going to do all of the scientific experiments for us. And now, of course, we need the rocket part in order to get it into orbit around Kerbin, don't we? Right, so there's our first little one there. And how about we go ahead and add some more on there as well, just so we've definitely got a good amount of fuel. Have that right there. This will be the stage which just kind of gets us into a solid orbit. So we'll go ahead and add a small little engine on there which can rotate. We will have the old swivel engine, just the one there, along with some fuel lines going from the old from the altar edge. There we go. So now they're all feeding the kind of central part. It's structurally sound. Add some little nipples to those rockets. There we go. And uh, whatever, let's uh, can we add some on the bottom as well, just to make it look amusing? Yes we can, okay, so, that's that. And also some structural integrity as well. And some more nipples, where are the nipples? I'll, here we go, I found the nipples, thought I'd lost the nipples for a second there. Don't want to lose the nipples on your spaceship. Okay, so now we need our main big stage, this is going to be the one which actually takes us into orbit, so to speak, the one which does all of the hard work. So this one's got to be pretty big. So let's go ahead and grab ourselves some multi-couplers. Now to make this one sizably larger than the other ones, because this is what's going to do all the hard work to actually get us into space. So let's go ahead and grab some Reliant engines. These are the ones which have all the power. These are the really powerful ones for a ship this size. There are bigger ones, of course, but these are the ones we're going to be using for now. As soon as I can find them again, where are they? Now we need to find the nipples again. Where are the nipples? I can never, ever find the nipples. Alright, there we go. Say hello to Kerbin 1. This is going to be the very first satellite that we put into orbit around Kerbin. Now, I always go overkill with these rockets. So hopefully I haven't done that this time. But hey, you never know. Okay, so let's give it a go. It's unmanned, so let's save it and head to the launch pad. Okay, we've got a lovely clear day. How about engage the SES, engage the RCS, full throttle, and let's launch Kerbin 1 in 3, 2, 1, bang. Okay, it seems nice and solid. Really, I could use a little more power, actually. We're starting to lose speed fairly rapidly. Let's start our turn into our orbit. Oh! As we turn, it starts to get a bit shaky. Should have added some more struts to the old nipples there. Oh, rapidly losing control. Losing control. Oh no, oh no. Pull up, pull up, pull up, pull up. Okay, as long as I'm hitting my my upper laps, I should be okay. That's a very weird thing to say, isn't it? Okay, we're about to run out of fuel. Alright, so disengage those. And away! Oh! Okay, as soon as we hit, I think it's 70,000 meters. 70 kilometers. That's when we are kind of in orbiting range, so to speak. Let's uh, hit it about 40 degrees. Okay, we are now kind of in orbiting height, but we're not in zero gravity yet. 
And we are about to run out of fuel in this main stage, but we have one more rocket. All right, and launch. Okay, we're still gaining speed, which is great, and we've got quite a bit of fuel in this one little rocket. How about we actually gain some altitude a bit quicker? We're engine zero gravity in one second. Go. Okay, so now we're in zero gravity. That's great news, but now quickly, we've got to plan our orbit. So how about we go ahead and add a maneuver? It's not a very good orbit so far. All right, so right now, if I hit this next kind of target, then I should have a pretty good universal orbit. It'll need to be polar, but you know what? I should have enough fuel for a two minute burn for it. So hopefully I'll have enough fuel to get it and go. All right, so we need to burn for two minutes in order to achieve this new orbit. Right, I'm gaining speed, which is good, but I'm still losing a little bit of height. But I need to burn for another 27 seconds in order to get this pretty stable orbit. Okay, so what's my current orbit then? Orbit. Oh, my, uh, my periapse is currently less than zero gravity, which is not good. All right, so I'm pretty much at my maximum height. However, I need to go a tiny bit faster. I need to go 40 meters a second faster in order to stop falling back to Kerbin, back to the Earth. And I need to hit that extra speed in 40 seconds. All right, so now I'm in a pretty good orbit. How about we go ahead and just ditch the rockets? We don't need those anymore. Brilliant. And now it's time to start running the experiments. Okay, so let's do it. Yep, so this is doing all the science data. Okay, so now we are constantly running scientific data back to Kerbin as we speak. So let's transmit the data. Transmit all reusable ones. And now it's sending data back to Kerbin. Okay, so that's done. So now Kerbin 1 is going to be orbiting Kerbin forever. And let's head back to the Space Center, and now we've got to start planning a satellite that will take us to the moon, which is actually called Moon, and it is right there. All right, so now we've got to get a satellite around the moon, and it should be a pretty similar job to the one we just did. We might actually just be able to improve our current design a little bit, give it some more power when leaving the atmosphere, and then we should be able to hit it no problem, really. Let's go ahead and add some metal beams, like right there just so we've got an extra anchor point to the ship. And then we should be able to, in theory, get rid of some of that wobble. We need some more power coming out of the atmosphere. So in order to do that, I'm thinking we're gonna go ahead and get some solid rocket boosters on this first stage. That way we should be able to, in theory, make it all the way. That one's a bit big. The thing I love about this game is that it actually encourages you to learn a little bit about science. You don't need to know everything. I mean, you don't have to start going to lectures or whatever, but it will really help if you just have some kind of basic knowledge of aerodynamics in space, you know, which is very different to aerodynamics on the ground. But you can make just regular old planes as well, so that's good stuff. All right, so we should be ready to go in three, two, one, launch. Okay, we've got a lot more power now, a lot more thrust on the initial launch, which is exactly what we needed. All right, so we're using quite a lot of fuel, but we're getting there much faster. This is definitely the hardest part of the last journey. So if we can just keep gaining speed until we hit to that point, maybe, then we should definitely have enough fuel to at least get to the moon. Okay, no more solid fuel, so let's eject those. No more solid fuel engines weighing us down. Oh, dear. <laughs> But we're still gaining speed very rapidly. We're almost at the speed of sound. Nope, we're now out of fuel. Okay, disengage those. Next set of engines. All right, so we hit the speed of sound. How are we doing in terms of our journey? Apolapse is still constantly doing it. We're not actually doing this in the most economic way. Really, we should get an orbit and then decide how to get there. But we're just going straight for it. We're going straight for it. Right, solar panels are now deployed in zero gravity. And my Apolapse is currently at it's currently very high. All right, so now we've run out of engines for there. Now we've only got one little engine to take us to the moon and get into orbit. Oh, okay. Uh, 
We've kind of got an entry maneuver possible, but we're going a tiny bit too fast. We might miss it. So if I can turn my ship around and just do a very slow corrective burn, then we should be able to get our entry orbit. So very slowly now. There we go. That's uh, That looks fairly stable. So when we hit this point here, we will have a moon encounter. Then we've got to very quickly adjust our orbit so that we actually go into the gravity of it. So let's go ahead and warp there. Hey moon, how you doing? Okay, so the warp's complete. Okay, here we go. I am now currently on an escape trajectory. So if I can, in theory, do a very quick maneuver to adjust my orbit. I think I can do this, I think I can do it. All right, so full speed. In three, two, go. Full speed. Come on, little blue line, make a circle. Come on. Yes. Yes, I'm now in orbit around the moon. So, now that that's done, how about I slow down a little more to get a little closer. That's a pretty good circular orbit, actually. Brilliant. So now, I've got this one in place as well. So how about I scrap that, and I'll... Launch for science experiments. Get all the data. Ace. There we go. All right. So I have now made it. I have made it so that I'm now orbiting the moon as well. So if we look at our little network of the stars, we've got a satellite around the moon and we've got a satellite around Kerbin. So now really, there's only one thing left to do, isn't there? We've got to put a man on the moon. So let's head back to base and plan this journey. <laughs> This is going to be a tough one. We need a lot more fuel. All right, so now we need to get a Kerbin on the moon. So how about we just go ahead and use the regular old Mark 1 pod, the most basic of basic pods, this one. And it will need a parachute for when we return to Earth. Cool. So now we need some liquid fuel. Tiny little engine, just a tiny little one. Because actually getting back from moon, because you're in zero gravity already, actually isn't that bad. But you do actually have to get there. That's the actual issue. Getting there and landing is the big issue. All right, so this lander actually needs a surprising amount of fuel because you've got to make lots of very tiny little adjustments. So how about we get that and also we go ahead and grab some of the smaller ones just on the edge. In order to get like kind of secure landing as possible, we'll have four. So we can have as many legs as possible. It's very tall, which means it will be very top heavy, which is bad. Alright, so they're all fueling this one little station. So now, just a tiny little Terrier engine underneath there as well. Just a tiny one. Because it's going to be like very fine little adjustments in order to do this. Yeah, we'll go with the L2 landing struts. So that's what they'll look like when it's landed. So put those there. Oh, also lights. Definitely need some lights underneath so we can actually see where we're landing. Very important that is. Surprisingly important. It would be nice if he could actually go and walk around on the moon as well. So we're going to go and add some ladders going all the way down so that he can actually walk on there without relying too much on his RCS to get back in and out of the ship. Because he does have a little jetpack, but a ladder is the way you should do it, let's be honest. Right, we're going to do away with the old kind of fuel tanks. We need much more fuel. So how about we go ahead and add one of these big old orange ones right there. Much bigger than the previous ones. Right, we're going to go with the kickback solid fuel this time. These ones, these are the big ones. These are the ones which will get you pretty far. And this thing is going to be very, very wobbly. So how about I go ahead and add some struts and strut the heck out of everything on this spacecraft. Okay, so this should be pretty much my finished craft. It's uh, not very fuel efficient to say the least, but it should get us there surprisingly quickly. And who else is going to man the thing? Of course, it's going to be Jebediah Kerman, everyone's favourite hero. So, right, really, I think it's time to go for this. So, let's launch. Let's launch in three, two, one, bang. Okay, we're getting surprisingly good speed coming out of the launch. You know, it's definitely thanks to these solid fuels. And in theory, we should run out of solid fuel at the same time as we run out of liquid fuel. So, that's pretty good for timing, at least means we won't be hanging around with lots of extra weight. And we are starting to wobble a bit now, so how about I just reduce my speed slightly? Still got the solid fuel after all. Just as we hit the speed of sound, we're going to have to get rid of our solid fuel. So we're starting to wobble again now, so good timing. 
See a solid fuel. Okay, they detached perfectly. Started to wobble quite a lot in the process of getting rid of it. As soon as we dump these liquid fuel tanks, we'll get rid of a lot of the wobble as well. Okay, so dump the liquid fuel. Excellent. Okay, so now we've got a lot more control back. And we're on course. So come on, periaps, where are you? Periaps being the opposite of the height. There's a periaps. All right, so when it gets to 70 kilometers, kill it. Okay, so now we're in a stable orbit around the Earth, meaning we will not fall into the Earth unless we actually decide to tell it to do so. So now that we've done that, we can start to plan our journey to the moon. All right, our maneuver is in approximately 50 seconds, and I don't think we've got enough fuel in this stage to do the full maneuver. However, we do still have this extra tank and whilst that's only got one engine, it should in theory be enough to get us there, no problem. Okay, full speed in three, two, one, go. 30 seconds of burn. All right, we needed like four more seconds of burn. So now we've only got this one engine, it'll take 10 more seconds of burning in order to get this maneuver. Hit the yellow one, boom. Okay, I didn't get the exact one I got, but I still got it. So now if I mess this up, we won't get another turn. The gravity will actually throw us out of Kerbin's gravity if we mess this up. There we go, okay. So right now we're currently on a crash course with the moon. We're actually going to hit the moon and we obviously don't want to do that. So how about we fix this very quickly? Okay, we're gonna to need to do a 30 second burn in 10 minutes. We should have the fuel to do that, no trouble. Look at him spinning. Jeb's having a great time. He's loving it. So we've got one minute left. Traveling in space is basically just about gaining or decreasing speed so that you get thrown or sucked into gravity of other celestial bodies. So right now, at the speed we are going, we would be thrown into the moon. But if we then burn for 30 seconds in the opposite direction, then in theory, we will then be sucked into the orbit as opposed to being thrown from Earth's orbit into the moon if that makes sense. No? Well, I didn't make up the rules. Okay, we have now missed the moon, which is great news. As soon as this circle, this line hits the circle, we're good. There we go, let's kill it there, save some fuel. Brilliant, okay, so now we are not going to crash into the moon. We will instead pass by it. So, that's brilliant. How about we uh, walk to our peri up so we can get a really close look at the moon. We haven't been this close to the moon yet. Okay, so right now we are as close as the moon we will ever get at our current speed. So we need to actually slow down, don't we? So if we slow down, all right, so a day later, we turn back to where we were, and in one minute's time, we will burn for 25 seconds, which will bring us much closer. We will then be 120 kilometers and 136 kilometers from the center of the moon. Okay, so we need a 12 second burn in three, two, one, burn. One, stop. Okay, there we go. Our orbit is not exactly stable, but we are very close now. In theory, you are going at your slowest at the top or the bottom of your orbit. So really, our landing, our apolapse, needs to be just touching the surface, pretty much. So as you now see, the apolapse is slowly starting to approach again, which means our height is actually lowering. Let's kill it there. As we get closer and closer, we need to make it so it's a soft, kind of vertical landing, because right now, we will hit it at quite high speed. Okay, it turns out we've actually got a little too much fuel, because we've still got all this fuel here, and we've got nowhere else to store it, so we might just have to ditch all this fuel, which is heartbreaking, I know, in order for a safe landing. Hopefully we'll miss those craters below. If there's craters below you, you're going to have a much harder task of landing, that's for sure. Okay, so we're currently descending at 55 meters a second, almost vertically. So we just kind of want to, we want to edge it, basically. We want to we wanna edge it. It's definitely something healthy you need to do. You know, get your, get your edging going. Oh, wait a sec, that's something horrible, isn't it? <laughs> okay, so we're pretty much straight vertical now because we slowed down. 
appropriately. Right now the SAS is going crazy because it doesn't know whether to straighten itself up or not. Really, you want to hit the surface at about 5 meters a second with your landing gears down. That should be safe enough. Ideally, you want it to be absolute zero, but you often can't get away with that. Blow it again in there. Keep in mind, this isn't exactly accurate. It's about 3,000 meters from the center, I believe, or from the highest point, sea level, even though there's no sea. So I might actually be deceptively close. So if I was to land right now, it would be a pretty good speed. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna ditch it now. All right, and engage this little one. Right, can we just see we're very close now, very close. Put the landing gears down now. And there it goes, all that fuel. All that fuel. <laughs> fuel is such a precious commodity and it's a nightmare to see it go. Oh no, what's up with the landing struts? They look all weird. They're not facing the right way. Oh no. Speed up, speed up, speed up. Speed up. Alright, four meters a second. Five. Three meters a second. It's not exactly straight. RCS. Just very carefully touch down. Don't topple over. Come on. Very light touch. Oh no. Engage away. Oh, we landed in the crater. Okay, we need to kind of hover around a bit, find a uh, flatter surface, because we're not going to land there. Full speed. Oh, no, 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 no. Don't mess this up now. Don't mess this up now. Oh, no. What's going on? I'm losing control. Losing control. Oh, dear. We're dancing with the devil here, people. Why is this messed up so bad? <laughs> All right. Burn in that direction. Burn in that direction. Burn, burn, burn. Oh. Nearly got it, nearly got it. Stabilized, stabilized. Yes! Ah, ah, ah. Brilliant, we did it. That was a, uh, a very rough landing, to say the least. But we did it. We actually landed on the moon. Yep. Keep going. Oh. Engage the little thruster pack we've got. Yes, there we go. Not bad considering I haven't played this game in a really long time. Boom! Excellent. So now, let's call it Moon Landing 1, because we may come here again. Who knows? Yep, right there. Oh, no, don't, don't, <laughs> don't go face first into the rocket jab. That's not a very good idea. And all right, let's board the ship. Okay, so now, let's get home. So, RCS on, SAS on, we have got full electric charge, let's do it. Brilliant stuff. A by landing site, moon landing one, you did it. Yes, I'm well aware of what my rocket looks like, but then again, they all kind of look like that, don't they? Okay, there we go. So now I've accelerated enough to actually exit the moon's atmosphere and then I will end up on this yellow trajectory, which will be my curb in orbit. So now I can just basically fast forward time and then I will be on my escape course back to Kerbin. Ground control to Major Tom. Take your protein pills and put your helmet on. Ground control to Major Tom. So now we are burning actually to slow down so that our highest point will be as near to Kerbin as possible. And then in theory, all we've got to do is slow down as much as possible so that we enter under 70 kilometers. And then after that, we'll be able to deploy our parachute when we are quite near the surface, 70,000 meters, which means we will start to encounter the resistance of the planet. Currently descending at 2,000 meters a second, and we're gonna land in the ocean, roughly. So how about we slow it down a bit by burning in the opposite direction? Okay, we're out of fuel. Oh dear, <laughs> oh dear, we're on fire. Okay, uh, ditch that. All right, we're currently at 30,000 meters. 
People have jumped out of planes at higher distances than this. So, slow down as much as we can. Slow down a little more, please. Slow down a little more. And then I can activate my parachutes. Come on, slow down. Still going way too fast, going 300 meters a second. Okay. I should be safe. Deploy parachutes. Oh, just please open parachutes. Yes! <laughs> yes! Boom! There we go. We made it. We made it back to Kerbin. Hopefully some Somali pirates don't pick me up. Okay, so guys, thank you very much for watching. This has been the final render, and this has been Kerbal Space Program. As I said, I love this game. I've done so much of this in this game in the past, but I've never done anything with it on the channel. So if you guys would like to see Kerbal Space Program on the channel, let me know. There are mods and stuff available for this game as well, where you can get some really exciting parts and new kind of, well, just new everything, really. New graphics, new weathers, new planets, everything. So... Thanks very much for watching guys, this has been the final render going to the moon twice. So, thanks very much for watching guys, this is the final render, and you have been the audience. Remember to check out more videos of Fallout 4, The Forest, Subnautica, everything you want in a channel. So, see you soon.